All right, question four is our butane conformation question. Um, to make it a little more interesting, I put in a second alkyl group, just another methyl group, and that gives us this. Now, we're dealing with conformations. We have to basically be sure we're looking down a productive bond. That's generally going to be the one in the center, and that's the case here. We're going to be looking down that bond. doesn't matter which way I look, whether I look from the bottom left or the top right. I'm going to be looking that as my center two carbons. So that bond is what's represented by the circle when I draw the conformation, because that's going to be the carbon in front and the invisible one behind it. Then I'm going to have to decide what I want in the front versus in the back. I'm going to say we look this way, we'll have the two methyl groups in the back. It does not matter, you just need to be consistent. So that's going to give us this with a hydrogen. And we're going to leave that as consistent all the way around. We're going to do our rotations from the front carbon, which means I'm going to draw that six times for the six conformational possibilities that we rotate through. And that way I don't lose it as I'm drawing other stuff. So we're just replicating the same thing to be consistent. Because one of the problems with this type of question is that you get a little bit confused and you go twisting the back atom instead of the front one not being consistent and you end up duplicating a conformation because you rotated the front most of the time and then rotated the back at one point and ended up essentially rotating the entire structure which is not another conformation. So these are our six possibilities that we're going to draw on top of this. Those three we're going to leave the back atom alone so that represents this entire part of the structure unchanged. The front I have a methyl group and I have two hydrogens, so that's what I'm going to put in place here. It does not really matter where I start um, as long as I keep track of it. So I'm going to start with that one. And just for use later, I'm going to Roman numeral these so I know which one's which as we go to talk about them when we're done. And also where I went from each one. So in each case, I'm going to turn that front atom by 60 degrees. So I'm going to go from staggered to eclipsed to staggered to eclipsed all the way across. So I'm going to do it clockwise just for consistency. So that means I'm going to end up, the first one is going to put that methyl group act, uh, sorry, eclipsing the hydrogen. At that point, I have a state structure that's inherently unfavorable. Eclipsing interactions are always bad compared to the staggered versions. So my eclipsed, my eclipsed conformations are never going to be ideal. Even with just hydrogens, the eclipsed conformation is slightly problematic. So I go out of that again with my next rotation. Now back to staggered again. We'll talk about what the interactions are in a moment. Let's just get everything drawn first. The next 60 is going to move that methyl group up to here. And again, I'm trying to not overlap these make it sloppy but they are eclipsed so they should look like they're overlapping probably a little bit more than I'm drawing them but my art skills leave something to be desired hence I became a scientist so there's a little bit more to it than that but we'll stick with that okay so I have three that are eclipsed in this case Roman numeral two four and six those are all terrible we've got eclipsing interactions all over the place really bad. We don't care really about an H and an H1. That's relatively tiny, but everything else here, these are serious problems. Those conformations are very unlikely to be stable in solution. We're going to try and avoid that if we can. All right. So in terms of deciding what's the most stable, it's always going to be a staggered conformation. It's just a matter of whether one is better or worse than the others. Um, so our interactions here that we have to worry about really are only the alkyl groups with each other. And that can only happen if they're gauche to each other, 60 degrees apart, dihedral angle. So that is this and this. That's an interaction. It's smaller than an eclipsing interaction. So this is still better than any of the eclipsed ones. But it's still a problem. It's still energetically a little frustrating. All right. Well, that's the same number of interactions that I have here. The other methyl group in both cases is too far away to interact. It's not a problem. So I have one gauche interaction for confirmation one. I have one gauche interaction for confirmation three. 
Confirmation 5, the only one we haven't talked about here, actually has two of them because the methyl group on the front carbon is actually riding between the two that are on the rear carbon. So this is a double problem. So energetically, confirmation one and confirmation three are equal. And that's as good as it gets. Those are the best ones in terms of avoiding bad interactions. Um, most likely, a methyl-methyl eclipsing interaction is going to be worse than the methyl hydrogen ones. So probably five and uh, sorry, six and four would be the worst. I didn't ask that, but that's the other end of the scale. This is the most unlikely thing to happen is to have those two methyl groups right on top of each other is energetically the least favorable.